reading today is from Luke 16, verses 19 to 31. For those of you who wish to look it up in the Church Bibles, it's on page 1050. Luke 16, verse 19 to 31. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores, and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried in hell where he was taught, tormented. He looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received good things while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who want to co come over here, you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. He answered, I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my father's house, for I have five brothers let him warn them so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Our preacher today is uh, Lee, our youth and community worker. Lee, let me pray for you, brother. Father, I do thank you for Lee and for his ministry, for his work with young people, for his work along with me. I pray, Lord, that you will bless him today as he brings your word. Lord, I pray that you will guide his tongue, Lord, that you will guide his thoughts, Lord, that you will help us to receive what you're saying today to us. I pray that you will speak to us by your spirit today, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. A particular welcome to uh, friends and family uh, here for the christening. Now, I've got a, a picture for you this morning, um, which I saw on Facebook uh, a little while back, and it brought a chuckle to my face, so even if you don't find it funny, please laugh, um, because it's, I think it's quite good. Could we just have the first slide up, please? I saw that, and I thought, that is probably what goes through the mind of a child when they're being baptized. Who's just got it? Betty. <laughs> Thank you. I thought it's, there's probably some truth in that, isn't there? If you would like that slide, I can email it to you so you can have it framed uh, for later on. Okay, can we just we'll move that now because I don't want to distract people with, with humor. Um, but congratulations. And if, I cannot believe how similar your two boys look. It's kind of amazing, um, but they look gorgeous. And, and your older son wanted to do it again, didn't he? He was, he was making his way up there. And that. Now, when you first, when you first hear this passage uh, read to you, and Steve read it to us, you might be thinking, what on earth has that got to say to us, living today uh, as we live? And actually, you, you could have a fair point there. You might think to yourself, uh, I don't have a, a beggar at my gate at the bottom of the garden or at the end of the driveway. You might be thinking, I don't even have a gate. Um, unless you live on Old Bedford Road. Anybody here live on Old Bedford Road in one of the really big houses with the, with the gates on them? The, the end thing at the moment with those houses seems to be to buy them knock them down apart from one wall and rebuild them, which has really confused me for a long time. And I've since found out that 
There's a way around something to do with the planning permission if you've left part of the house still standing, even if it's just one wall. Um, but not many of us these days have gates, do we? Our first house, actually, um, back in, in Leegrave, where we used to live, we did have a gate, and it was a rainbow gate, actually. The house had a rainbow painted onto it. Um, and after we moved in, um, they, previous owners hadn't done a very good job of looking after them. Um, and we were thinking of taking them off and replacing them. But we quickly found out that they were, quite a, a, they were like local celebrities, these gates. Um, so we kept them going as long as we could until they literally fell apart. But before we really get into this passage, I want us to look at a little bit of the historical context of it. You'll notice in the beginning of the passage that it says, uh, the rich man was dressed in purple. Now, quick show of hands. Does anybody here own or wear anything that's purple? few of you, mainly, well, mainly women, apart from Charles. Did you have your hold up, Charles? Tie. Tie. Okay, that's all right then. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. It seems to, you have purple as well? What do you have that's purple? Purple sweater. Do you know what purple was in Bible times? Are you ready for this? Purple was a sign of richness. You were rich. You were very, is, is he rich? Do you know about his richness? No. <laughs> you can talk later. Um, but purple was, it's what really rich people, it wasn't just the kind, of, the kind of wannabe rich people, you know, the kind of people that have a flashy car on higher purchase and, you know, they, they look rich, but actually, you know, they're, they're eyeballs in debt. This was the really, really rich people. And the Jewish people, which, which is the people that, that Jesus was speaking to, they believed that if you were rich, it's because God had blessed you, okay? If you were rich, it's because God had blessed you and made you rich, now, you could be left thinking with that, well, that's me done for then, isn't it? I've not been blessed by God because I'm not rich. Um, and if you looked at my bank account, you would think, <laughs> he's not blessed. Um, but actually, um, when Jesus was talking to these people, it, it wasn't actually the rich that had been blessed. God wants to bless everybody, whether you're rich or whether you're poor, and he doesn't single people out. But then we have the opposite, don't we? We have this man called Lazarus. Now, has anybody ever heard the name Lazarus? You might remember the story in the Bible. There's another Lazarus who was, uh, had this little thing done to him, um, basically died, and he was brought back to life again, which is quite a big event um, in the Bible. But Lazarus actually means he whom God helps. And one of the things I love about this passage is the rich man is just known as the rich man, the rich bloke. Lazarus, the poor beggar, is known by name. He's known by his name. And the worst thing for, for poor old Lazarus, he was in really bad health. Now, we all suffer with bad health at times, don't we? And it's, it's frustrating, actually. I've recently um, had a really, really bad back. And uh, it's a recurring injury that I did years and years and years ago. Um, and it keeps coming back to haunt me. And I will tell you how I did it, because it's quite funny. Have you ever seen those funny YouTube videos? There's one going around at the moment where someone's on the back of a lorry. I used to drive 40-foot lorries. And uh, I had a pallet truck. You know those trucks you lift the pallets with? And uh, I was on a slight slope where I'd reversed into this yard. And I, it was a pallet of salt. Now, salt, you think, oh, just salt. But these pallets of salt, well, 12, uh, 1,200 kilograms, these pallets. And I pumped it up. And I was rolling it to the back of the trailer, ready to the guy with the forklift truck to take it off. And I could not, the, the thing that pulls it down, it jammed. And I literally went off the back of the trailer um, with 1,200 with kilos of salt. And I landed funny, and I did my neck. Um, and... It, it hurt my back. So when people say, how did you do your back? I always tell them I fell off the back of a lorry, um, <laughs> which is actually true. It's, it's, it's what I did. But Lazarus was really, not only was he poor, he was in really, really bad health as well. And his health was so bad that he had sores all over his body. Now, I don't know if you've ever had an open sore. Um, first thing we would do these days, isn't it, is we'd like get the old uh, Savlon. Um, if, you're, if you're a man and you're really, really tough, you know, we have the magic spray, don't we? Has anybody's nan ever had that magic spray they used to spray on, the yellow stuff, when you had a cut or a sting? I think it was just colored water my nan used, but it always made things better. And, but he didn't have that. There was no NHS. No NHS. There was no way of uh, being made well. If you, were, if you were poor and if you were unhealthy and you were unwell, you were in big trouble. The only thing left for you to do was actually to beg and rely on the charity of other people. And it was even worse because when he sat, because of his poor health, he was sat, the dogs would come and lick his sores. Now, all of us that are dog owners might think, oh, the dog licking you, that's lovely. And technically, a, a dog's mouth 
Um, he's actually cleaner than our mouths, believe it or not. Um, although if you saw some of the things my dog did with her mouth, you probably wouldn't um, believe that. Um, but they would come and lick his open sores. And actually, that was detestable at the time because in Jewish culture, dogs were vermin. Uh, dogs would have been running wild and they were literally vermin, which is hard for us to understand because you know, dogs in our society are quite, you know, we hold dogs in affection, don't we? We love our dogs and you know, we treat our dogs well. Um, you might be one of those people that can't stand dogs. Um, we'll pray for you later if that's you. Um, but we hold dogs in esteem these days. But the parable goes on to say that, that Lazarus died. And, and when he died, he was taken to, to be with Abraham. And uh, Abraham was, was in heaven. Um, and now this is a big role reversal here, isn't it? You've got this poor man with open sores who's very, very unhealthy and very unwell. And he's taken to be in heaven with Abraham. Now the rich man, he dies. Um, and this is a parable, I should say. Um, and if you're not aware what a parable is, a parable is a, is a story that Jesus told that would always have a point to it. He was teaching something. And, uh, and the rich man, he ends up um, in, in, in hell, a place called Hades. And uh, for it being a parable, that's why the, the story side of it, it comes out. And the, and the rich man, he, he says, Abraham, please send, send Lazarus just to dip his finger in the water to, to quench my thirst. Now, I don't know if you've ever been extremely thirsty, okay, to the point that you... you you just can't cope much longer. You just you are so thirsty. I don't think many of us have probably experienced that kind of thirst. Um, I do this really odd thing. Um, my favorite drink is sparkling water. Okay, it's really weird. Um, I just got a real thing for sparkling water. And we do a youth group here on a Wednesday night, um, and it's usually quite manic in here. Um, lots of fun going on. At the end of it, we have to put all the youth equipment away, and it's all we have to hoover the floor, and it's just it's full on. Um, and when I get home, the first thing I love to do is just sit down in my chair and crack open a bottle of sparkling water. And the first few mouthfuls of just, it's just, oh, it's almost heaven. Okay, if you don't like sparkling water, I'll pray for you afterwards along with the dogs. Um, but it's, it's just so refreshing. But the rich man's thirst was far beyond that. He was in agony, and he just wanted a, a short little bit of a, a drop of water. But it wasn't possible. And it's interesting how he's, teach, he's, how he's looking after. This rich man is still assuming this thing where, send Lazarus. He's still looking at, at the poor man as is, is it somebody that, that he can command, somebody he can control. And the rich man is persistent. He said, you know, he wanted this water. And it was said, no, there is a, there is a, there is a, a, a chasm between them. And a chasm is a, is a space between two things um, that, that cannot be, that cannot be uh, got over. And then the, the rich man goes on to say, well, can you, can you send somebody? You know, can you send Lazarus to, to go and speak to, to my brothers? Because I've got brothers, and I, and I don't want them to end up here. Now, that's a normal, a normal human reaction, isn't it? You know, if, you've, if you end up somewhere really, really bad, you don't want the people you love and care for to end up there as well. Um, I did that in a very, very small way this morning. I, I, I drove to church. Um, and some really generous, kind person last night, uh, probably at pub closing time, had obviously taken a bottle of beer or glass, and they just smashed it all over the bottom of uh, Hancock Drive. And uh, I managed to see it, and I managed to get round it. Um, it's getting to the point, actually, Luton, that you'd benefit from carrying a dustpan and brush in your car, the amount of broken glass you see. But I phoned my wife up, and I said, when you, when you drive up the road, there's all broken glass at the bottom. Be careful as you try and go round it. And part of that was because I'm a lovely husband, and I, and I didn't want my wife to experience that. And the r real reason was I didn't want to spend the afternoon sorting out a puncture or going down to the tire place and getting new tires. But when we experience something that's bad, we don't want other people to experience the same thing. And this is what was going on for the, for the rich man. But the answer is still no. And the rich man, he's so persistent. He even says, look, if somebody is sent from the dead, they'll pay attention. Now, most of us, if we're honest, if somebody was to come back from the dead, we would think, wouldn't we? Jen, sir, what's your name? Robert. If, uh, if there was a, um, your wife was, is this your wife, sorry? If she was really wanting to explain something to you and you were doing that man thing where you just weren't listening, okay, I'm sure you never do that. I'm really sure you never do. Okay, and you won't listen, 
But she arranges it for somebody from your past, maybe a, a, someone long back who has died, okay, to come back and to tell you. Your reaction would probably be one of, I am always going to listen to my wife from now on, because there would be that initial kind of shock, wouldn't there? But actually, we, we say that, but people don't listen to Jesus today, and, and he, he rose from the dead. So the, the story goes, the parable goes, actually, no, because even if someone is sent raised from the dead, they still won't listen. And during his life, as we've already explored, the rich man had everything. You know, he lived in luxury, he ate in luxury, he had all the comforts and everything else. And he could have helped Lazarus if he wanted to. I'm sure most of us here this morning, being honest, if we had somebody at, at our gate who was starving, who was, uh, was as poor as that, we would do something. I don't think there's many of us here this morning that wouldn't do something. Now, if you just take this passage and was to read it and hear my, my few simple words this morning, you might think, well, that's simple then. If you're rich, um, you don't go to heaven. And if you're poor, you do go to heaven. And most of us are thinking, well, actually, I'm not rich and I'm, and I'm not poor because, you know, I've got enough to survive on. I, I managed to pay the rent or the mortgage just about and just about afford to keep the car on the road. So where, where do I fit in all of that? The thing is, eternity with, with Jesus is for all of us. But we don't want to be like the rich man in the parable. Now, there's two things that we can take from this this morning, two take-homes, if you like, that I'm going to leave you with. And the first one is to people who already know Jesus. If you already know Jesus and you have a relationship with him, then you are very similar to the rich man. You've got everything. You've got the good thing. And the good thing being knowing Jesus Christ, having a relationship with Jesus Christ. And if you haven't, and we'll come to that in a moment, for those of us that have, our responsibility is not to keep that good thing and just enjoy it for ourselves. Because if we don't take that good thing, and if we don't go out and we don't share that with our neighbors, with our work colleagues, with our friends, with the people that we come across in life, then we're just being like that rich man. We're just looking after number one and we're keeping it to ourselves. And that's neither right nor fair. Now, many, many years ago, when I, when I first started um, my, my work um, for, for the church, I had a, a, a picture. Now, for those of you that, that aren't used to church language, sometimes uh, God gives images to people that help them with a decision, something in life. And I've only ever had two really, really clear pictures that I knew without a doubt were from God. And one of these pictures was I was on an escalator. And just like the normal one that you have, you know the one that you come in off the bus station, old bus station entrance into town, you've got an escalator up and you've got the escalator down. And on this image, this picture, I was on the escalator going up. Um, and loads of my friends and people I know, they were on the escalator going down. And as soon as I had this picture in my head, I could see the people on the escalator going down, looking over at me and going, if you knew all this stuff about God, if you knew all this stuff about Jesus, if you knew about eternity and you knew about heaven and you knew about hell, why did you never tell us? And I can remember my face in the, in the, in the picture that I had. I felt guilt. I felt ashamed. And I felt awful for my, for my friends and, and the people I knew that I'd never shared Jesus with. Now, that's why since I had that picture, I, I have made it and taken every opportunity I can to speak to people about Jesus. And I, I try not to do that in a kind of, you know, the, the, the stereotype Christian way, um, you know, where we, we turn up and, and say to people, do you know Jesus? Okay? Because we can put people off, can't we? We've got to try and do it in a way that's relevant. You know, if you see somebody that's uh, in need or they're struggling with something in life, and you just go and say to them, Jesus loves you, I'm going to pray for you, that's good. But if you don't say, what can I do to help? Is there anything I can do? Do you need anything? You know, we need to physically help people because we need to tell them about Jesus. That's so important. But Jesus has called us to love people and to care for people and to, and to help people. Now, I want to put a verse up um, on the screen. Can I have the other one up? Should it come up? Brilliant. Okay, so for that's, that's uh, for, for us as, 
as Christians. Okay? How many of you have seen the film Gladiator? Best film ever, in my opinion. It's just, ah, oh, it's just such a good movie. Okay? But I love the line in it that says, what we do in life has echoes in eternity. Now, if we love Jesus and we know Jesus, what we do in this life counts for eternity. But the other one I want to put up, and this is a verse at the, towards the very, very end of the Bible, and it says, I saw a great white throne, and the one sitting on it, the earth and the sky, fled from his presence, but they found no place to hide. I saw the dead, both great and small, standing before God's throne, and the books were opened, including the book of life, and the dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. The sea gave up its dead, and death and the grave gave up their dead, and all were judged according to to their deeds. Now, that's something that we're all gonna, that's going to happen to all of us one day. And I said this, this uh, talk was twofold. One is to, to talk to those that already know Jesus and say, what are you doing about it? What are you doing to share it? But the other is to talk to people who maybe, yeah, you don't know Jesus. Maybe actually this is the first time you've actually ever really heard somebody talking about Jesus in a very long time, if ever. But Jesus died on a wooden cross for us over 2,000 years ago. Because between us, between man, woman, people, and God, there's a big void. And the void is, is the stuff we do that's wrong. It's the stuff we do called sin, the Bible calls it. Now, I'm not going to ask people to do a show of hands, because I would assume that all hands would go up. We all do stuff that's wrong, don't we? Does anybody here, put your hand up if you are perfect and you make no mistakes, you've never done anything wrong. Okay. Now, that's probably technically true at the moment. That could be true at the moment. He was, yeah, he could. He could. We'll, we'll let that one go. Babies probably don't quite come into that quite yet. But we all make mistakes. Okay, every single one of us. Sir, what's your name? Nick, have you done anything wrong this morning? Is this, your, is this lady with you? Shall I ask her? <laughs> no, I won't. I won't do that. Don't worry. Okay, we all do things that are wrong. It's impossible to not do things wrong. It's, it's, it's almost... We can't help ourselves. Okay, my wife is sat over there, and if you were to ask, you can feel free at the end of it. Trish, put your hand up. Wave. If you want to go and ask her things I do wrong, she'll give you a really long list. Okay? Just a small list, though. Not, okay? <laughs> we, we all do things that are wrong. We, we, it's almost like we can't help ourselves. And those things that we do wrong, they separate us from God. And God's just, and God's perfect. Okay? And when people make mistakes, when people do things wrong, justice says... Something's got to be done about it. Now, we deserve to be punished for the wrong things that we do. And we might think, well, actually, I'm not that bad. You know, I've not murdered anyone. thought about it a few times, but I've never murdered anyone. I've, I've not done this. I've not done that. But sin is sin. And to God, if we do something wrong, then we've sinned. And sin deserves punishment. But Jesus stepped in and said, I will take their punishment. I will pay the price for their mistakes. And it's such a simple thing because then all we have to do is say, I accept that, Jesus, thank you. I recognize that I've messed up, I made mistakes, but you paid the price for that. I don't understand why you did that, but you did. And when we make that decision, we have been made right with God. And actually, all the stuff that we've done wrong, it's like it's gone. If you were to start talking to, to Jesus about it one day, you know, oh, Jesus, do you remember that day when I, oh, I can't, I can't believe I did that. It's like Jesus has gone, I don't remember, what stuff? Because he's paid that price. And my challenge and my encouragement to you this morning is if that's you, don't leave this place this morning without starting to really think about that. Have a conversation with the man in the dress. He'll, he'll take that off at the end of the service. Have a conversation with me. Have a conversation with anyone you want to that knows Jesus and say, how do I start this? And we're doing an alpha course here that's, that starts to explore that. Some people find that helpful. Some people find actually having a conversation with someone they know that loves Jesus helpful. But start something because one day when Jesus comes back, there's going to be one or two places. And once you're in one, there's no going to the other. And with one of them, you won't want to go to the other. So my challenge and my prayer for all of you this morning is really start thinking about that journey.